Welcome back to the second half of our rigging exercise. In these sessions, we are going to bind our 3D character with a skeletal frame, which we have created earlier. Through this exercise, you will learn the essential working steps of the binding process. Later, you shall get to experience the workflow of a skin weighting that is known as pain weight, a form of a Maya-based jargon. First, let's float our character into the Maya viewport. And before we begin the binding process, we ought to ensure our character is being consolidated into a single mesh. For instance, we have the head and beard mesh being separated in the first place. Now we are going to combine these parts and merge the vertices. There should not be any hole gaps between the connected parts. As for the beard, just simply combine it. Once you have done combining the parts, do rename your character with your preferences. Here, you would notice there are some history being locked onto the mesh. Go to Edit, choose Delete All by Type, History. Next, do freeze the transformations. Remember, it is important to clear these unwanted data and make sure the mesh is clean before any binding process. Okay, now let's begin the binding process. First, select the mesh, then shift select the COG joint, go to the scheme, bind schemes, and smooth bind. Here, you would see the wire frame of the mesh turn into magenta color, which are signify all the DCs are now driven by the skeletal rigs. Now turn on the shading mode and test the control rigs as you like, and do not forget to undo the back to the original bind pose. The purpose of the testing here is to identify the irregular deformation area of the mesh. For instance, let's focus on the movement of the arm. You will notice the thoracic area is being overly pulled, and same thing happens to the tithe or the femoral part as well. Here you can see the waist belt is being illogically pulled down while the leg is being raised. This was caused by the weight of the skin is not accurately distributed among the skeletal joints. And we have to manually correct it by repaint its weight to the rightful joint. First, let's temporarily hide all the display items and only show the polygon mesh. With the mesh being selected, go to the animation shelf Double-click on the two of the paint skin weights. The two setting menu should be sprung open on your left and there are quite a number of attributes in there. By default, Maya would automatically select the COG or the root joint of a scaffold. The shade of grey that being displayed here is an indicator that the vertices around the hip area were partially influenced by the root joint. You could replace the grayscale shading display with a color RAM that looked like a heat map. But for the meanwhile, let's try to work with the grayscale first. We are going to paint off the root joint influences over the hip area. In the process of weight painting, we are going to engage a paint brush, and you can change its brush size through manipulating the radius. Or you can hold down the shortcut key B and drag with your left mouse button to change the size of the brush. And without pressure sensitive stylus, we should reduce the opacity of our brush. Now let's have a look at the left hip joint inferences over the vertices before we begin. As you can see, the hip joint has its influence being spread to the knee area. 
whereas the knee inferences were way too low to the ankle. We have to redistribute the skin weight of the hip area manually. Beforehand, let's work on the COG joint first. Okay, by default, the pain action is catered for adding more inferences. We should hold down the control key for reverse paint actions to remove inferences. Now, with the control key being held down, let's quickly paint this region off from the COG joint. As for the other side of the hip, let's use the color ramp as the representation and do continue to paint this area off as well. Alright, let's move on with the left hip. Select the joint, which will add more inferences to the femoral area. And we are also going to paint these areas off. Now let's remove the inference of the knee area as well. During the process of weight painting, you can try to hold down the shift key for smoothing or even out the painted shades. Okay, now let's try to move on to the knee. The knee joint seems to have too much of inference. Do try to de-distribute it. Now let's try to add back the weight to the knee area. And that will do. Do continue to rework on the ankle joint and the other area as well.
Okay, we are almost done. Let's see how is the result. You could press the shortcut key Q to exit the pain weight mode. Turn back on to all the control rigs. Now go to test the leg. See how is the deformation. So far, things have got better and more natural looking with much subtlety. To see the differences of before and after, do try to raise the other leg. And you will notice it did work much better with lesser distortion. In the process of skin weighting, there are always a limit. And the limit is the most obvious for a game mesh, as there isn't enough vertices to provide a smooth deformation or articulations. And here marks the end of this exercise. I believe you can complete the remaining parts and weight the skin to its optimum state. And you can always mirror your paint weight onto the other joint for reducing your workload. Thank you and have fun.